Okay, let's uh, now let's see if we can uh, come up with a second degree uh, polynomial, second degree Taylor polynomial that will be a uh, an even better approximation to uh, our function f, whatever the function f might be here. So let's say. Uh, Uh, let's say this uh, is approximation by a second degree polynomial. And of course, let's write down our polynomial. Well, that's the first degree Taylor polynomial that we already derived, we already figured out. But from now on, starting from this point forward, I'm no longer going to write the first degree Taylor polynomial as p of x. I'm going to write it as p1 of x for first degree Taylor polynomial. And now I want to come up with a second degree Taylor polynomial, so or a second degree polynomial, and it'll turn out that we'll call it the Taylor polynomial. And so that's going to have this form here, second degree polynomial. And of course here I have x, here I have delta x, but delta x is, is uh, x minus x bar, so we're fine there. And so just kind of, if you like, reproducing the approach we took uh, for the first degree polynomial, let's say we need at uh, x equals x bar, which is delta x equals zero, what we want to have is p, and now it's p2, p2 at x bar should be equal to, well, delta x is zero. So that's zero, that's zero, and of course we want this to be equal to f at x bar. And so that means that if we want f of x bar to be equal to p2 of x bar when delta x is 0, well, p2 when delta x is 0 is just a naught. So that says that f of x should be a naught, just as before. Nothing new here except there's this extra term, but when delta x is 0, that drops out. Okay, so that's just what we had before. And then we have p2 prime at x bar Let's say we want that to be equal to the derivative of f at x bar. And so that would say, uh, in fact, let me do what we did before. Here we have, this is a naught plus a1 delta x plus a2 delta x squared, but delta x is zero, so that drops out, that drops out because they're zeros to say 0, 0. So we have a naught should be f of x bar. What's the derivative of uh, the P2 polynomial? That is going to be, that derivative is what I'm putting over here. Well, the a naught's a constant. That's gone. The derivative with respect to, uh, the derivative with respect to x is a1, because this is a1 x minus x bar. So this derivative of p2 is going to be a1, and then the derivative of this is going to be 2 times a2 times delta x. So that's 2 a2 delta x. But again, we're looking at where delta x is 0, because we're looking at what happens at x bar. So that's 0, so that means that uh, it's going to have to be the case, if we want this derivative to be the derivative of f, we're going to have to have f prime be a1, just as before. So everything's the same, except we have this extra term here because of the second uh, degree Taylor polynomial, but it's always delta x's, so they're dropping out. But now we have a second derivative evaluated x bar, and we want that to be the same as the second derivative of the function that's being approximated at x bar. And so what is the second derivative of p 
2. What's the derivative of the first derivative? And so that's a constant now, and that drops out. And I take the derivative with respect to x, or with respect to delta x, and that's 2a2. So this is now 2a2. So let's write that 2a2 has to be equal to f double prime of x bar, the second derivative of f. And of course, if 2a2 is equal to this, then that means that um, that uh, a2 is equal to 1 half f double prime at x bar. So that means that our second degree Taylor polynomial is apparently going to be, and I'm going to leave a little space down here, so let's say that our second degree Taylor polynomial then is apparently now, now I'm not putting x bar in here. I'm going back up to the second degree Taylor polynomial and I'm substituting in the values for a0, a1, and a2. And so this is going to be f at x bar plus f prime at x bar delta x plus one half uh, f double prime at x bar delta x squared. So that is the that is the second degree Taylor polynomial. I should have put the second degree maybe over here. For F around x bar, near x bar. So we now have uh, gone from our first degree or linear affine Taylor polynomial to approximate f to uh, a second degree or quadratic uh, polynomial. And we could ask the same question, is, um, is, uh, is, this a, is this a good approximation? And here, we would actually look at the relative error here, which we would look at, uh, in fact, let me even write here, that here it is 1 over, uh, let me write this a little differently here. Here we have the limit uh, as delta x goes to 0 of 1 over delta x squared r 2 of delta x equals 0, where, of course, r 2 of delta x is f of x minus p 2 of x. The error of our approximation, or how far the approximation is off, uh, if it's the second order or second degree approximation. And of course, if I were to rewrite this as f of x equals p2 of x plus r2 of delta x, we would see that it would be natural to call this the remainder, uh, the remainder term for our, uh, for our Taylor polynomial. And that would mean if I were to add on here r2 of delta x, that would be what it takes to make this into the exact f of x. So let me take that off, though. I don't want to, I don't want to confuse the issue here and make it look like that's part of the Taylor polynomial. Okay? And so the fact that this goes to zero is actually Taylor's theorem. So Taylor's theorem is that uh, if we use the Taylor polynomial as our approximation and define the remainder term of the error this way, then that relative error goes to zero as delta x goes to zero or goes to zero in the second degree case as delta x squared. Well, as delta x goes to zero, but it's one over delta squared times the 
remainder term that goes to zero. So we get a second degree approximation to x squared to e to the x. So at this point, let's do the following. Let's, we can take this off. What I would say as an exercise, I'll probably give this as an exercise, is for you to work out the uh, exact Taylor polynomial uh, for uh, f of x equals x squared around x bar equals 1. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work this out in some detail for this function here where things aren't quite so obvious. So what we will do is we'll take off the diagram up here, uh, we'll keep the one down here, and we'll actually work out the details of this for the function f of x equals e to the x. Okay, so the first thing I want to do now is I want to take what we've done here with our first and second degree approximating Taylor polynomials and apply that to the function f of x equals e to the x. Now, of course, uh, the coefficients uh, here in the polynomial are the derivative and the second derivative. So we need to know what those derivatives are, but of course, the derivative of e to the x everywhere is also e to the x. And therefore, the second derivative of f of x is e to the x. And in fact, every one of the derivatives, the third, fourth, and so on derivatives, are all just the same original function, e to the x. That's a characteristic of the exponential function, e to the x. And let's, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the approximating the function e to the x near x bar equals zero. And in particular, I'm going to look at what happens when we have x equals one, which is the same as saying delta x equals one because x bar is zero. This is, of course, x minus x bar, which is x minus zero. And so, uh, when I look at f of x, when x is 1, I'm going to have e to the first, which is just e. And let me say that I know that the exact value of e happens to be, now I'm trying to approximate it, so it's as if I, I don't know the value, but let's, let me just put in the value so we can kind of, kind of assess as we go along just how well we're doing. So the value of this exactly is 2.71828, and then a bunch of other stuff. So when I say exact, of course, <laughs> this is exact as exact as I'm getting it right here. Uh, and this is an irrational, in fact, transcendental number, so it just, it just goes on and on like this. Um, so let's actually apply what we've done over here. Let's note now that our... Uh, second degree Taylor polynomial, that's f prime at x bar, sorry, it's f at x bar, so that means it is e to the x bar plus the derivative of the function at x bar, but that's also e to the x bar, and then we have delta x, and then we have one-half times the second derivative, but the second derivative is also e to the x, so that's e to the x bar, and this is delta x squared, and so that's going to be e, whoop, e to the zero, if delta x is, is, uh, is one, e to the zero, delta x is one, so here I have one-half, e to the zero, Delta x squared is 1, so this is going to be just 1 plus 1 plus uh, 1 half, which of course is 2 and a half. So that is our approximation to uh, the function f of x at x equals 1. And so let me put in here that we're doing this now. Uh, at x equals 1 uh, up until this 
Here I didn't have x equals 1, but here I said x equals 1, so delta x equals 1, so we're here. So 2 and a half, that's not a great approximation. Uh, and let's actually draw a picture here. Let's uh, take uh, our tangent here. That slope is 1, so that should look like this, roughly. And so that's uh, our first degree Taylor polynomial. The second degree Taylor polynomial is a quadratic function, so it has a curvature that's the same as f here, so it lies in between. And in fact, let's even draw roughly what it would probably look like. Something in between, and we're doing all this evaluation here. And of course, this is the true value of f of x at x equals 1. So this is f of 1, which is just e to the first, which is just e, which is 2.71, etc., etc. So, uh, so we get an approximation, maybe not the greatest approximation, but there we get this approximation. And so now let's, uh, let's go one step further. Let's look for a third degree polynomial. Why not? Okay, so let's now say third degree polynomial. This part's the same. These, these are going to be the same. Well, they're not quite the same. We're going to have over here a3 delta x cubed. But again, since delta x is 0, that's 0. Let's put in this is 0 also here. 0, 0, 0, a naught. So it's still the case that f The, uh, the constant term is going to have to be f of x bar. And now let's look for the, we want the derivative of our third degree polynomial to be the same as the derivative of f. And so uh, this is going to be, well, what's the derivative uh, of this? It's, this drops out. It's a1. There's that a1. And it is 2a2 times delta x. So we have uh, 2a2 delta x, and then we have 3 a3 delta x squared. So you might guess, in fact, by looking at the second degree Taylor polynomial and noticing that now I've got a 3 here, you might guess that the, the if I keep adding higher, if I go to higher degree Taylor polynomials, so that I keep adding additional terms on here, that the Taylor polynomial is going to be this and this and then one half second derivative, one third of the third derivative, one fourth of the fourth derivative, and so on, times delta x squared, delta x cubed, delta x to the fourth. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if that's so. Let's see if that conjecture is right. So let's look at the second derivative of the Taylor polynomial, of the polynomial, well, it is the Taylor polynomial, um, and we want it to be equal to the second derivative of f, and that second derivative is going to be, well, let's actually take this off here. And let's note that this derivative here is going to be 2a2 plus 2 times 3. So this is going to be plus 2 times 3, when I take the 2 down here, times delta x. And of course, delta x is 0 because we're doing all this at x equals x bar. So delta x is 0. So that means that the, uh, the a2 coefficient here still has to be one-half of f double prime at x bar. And now we have 
our third derivative of the third degree Taylor polynomial, and that is going to be equal to the third derivative of f, both evaluated at x bar. And what is that third derivative? That derivative is, well, this is a constant, so that drops out, and that derivative is 2, I left something out here. <laughs> I left something out, we got to fix that. I left out the a3. This is not correct. So let's fix this. This should have been 2 times 3 times a3 times delta x. And so uh, when I take the derivative of this, it's just going to be 2 times 3 times a3. I could write that as 6, of course. 2 times 3 is 6, but I'm going to keep writing it as 2 times 3 times a3. And therefore, a3 is not one-third of the third derivative of f at x bar. It's one-sixth of the third derivative of f at x bar. So let's write this as 1 over 2 times 3 times the third derivative of f at x bar. And so that's going to get also added in down here. So this is going to be 1 over 2 times 3 times uh, f of x bar uh, delta x cubed. And so now this is our third degree Taylor polynomial for f and x bar. And of course, the remainder term has the property that 1 over delta x cubed times the third degree remainder term, or third order remainder term, is what goes to zero as delta x goes to zero, which is Taylor's theorem for a third degree Taylor polynomial. And so, of course, now we can actually write this more generally. And so let's actually take this off. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and just write down the general form of uh, the Taylor polynomial. Uh, so uh, it's going to take a moment to take this off and then we'll be back and we'll write down the, the general form of the, of the uh, Taylor polynomial. Okay, so uh, the only thing left to do right now in, the, in this part of the lecture, I think, is to uh, write down our general nth degree Taylor polynomial and then apply it to our exponential function down here and see what we get. So let's say the nth degree Taylor polynomial or the Taylor polynomial of degree n is uh, p now sub n of x. That's a naught a1 delta x a2 delta x squared out to a n delta x to the n. And notice that we could just write this uh, with a summation here. Sum k equals 1 to n a k delta x to the k where each of those a k's is equal to uh, 1 over k factorial times the kth derivative of f, which we typically write like that, superscript with a parenthesis around it, uh, evaluated it at x bar, and of course where this factorial is uh, uh, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 out to uh, times n. It's the product of the first n natural numbers. And uh, so that is the Taylor polynomial. And we also have that 
uh, the Taylor's theorem is that the limit as delta x goes to zero of one over uh, delta x to the n, rn of delta x is zero, where rn of x is defined to be uh, f of x minus p of x. And in fact, uh, this is Taylor's theorem. And so let's see if we can now take this general form of the Taylor polynomial and use it to see if we can get a better approximation to uh, the value of e, um, which is f of 1, e to the first power here. So let's, uh, here we have what we already did, which was the second degree Taylor polynomial. But let's write it out for a few more, uh, a few more terms so that we're looking not at the second degree polynomial, but, and I'll leave blank how many degrees we're going to go. And let's go out here to the uh, third degree term, which we know is 1 over 2 times 3. So that's 1 over 6 times uh, e to the x bar, delta x cubed um, plus 1 24th, 2 times 3 times 4, times e to the x bar, times delta x to the 4th. And let's do one more here. 1 over 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. So that's 120. And this is e to the x bar, delta x to the 5th. So this is the 5th degree Taylor polynomial. The highest uh, degree term is delta x to the fifth. And so this will give me an approximation, whether it's a good or bad one, it will give me an approximation to the value of f of x for any x. Now if x is really big, it's probably not going to be a real good approximation. But if x is not too large, not too far away from x bar, which is zero, then it might give me a pretty good, and in fact, a better approximation than this. And so let's just see what we get. So for x bar equals zero, so we're, we're doing this, well, I've got x bar here, but I'm saying now let x bar be zero, so that uh, delta x is just x, and let's say that's equal to 1. So indeed, I'm evaluating it here at x equals 1. And so I'm going to be approximating the value of e, e to the first. And so what I have is p5 of x is e to the x. These are all e to the 0, and e to the 0 is always 1. So all these e to the x bars are 1s. So I have, actually let me give myself some more room here because I'm going to need the extra room. So let's come down here and let's give us, ourselves a little more room here too. Let's say this is P5 of X where X equals one and that's going to be E to the zero, one plus e to the 0, which is 1, times delta x, which is 1. That's 1. 1 half times 1 times 1. 1 sixth, 1 over 2 times 3, times 1 times 1. 1 24th times 1 times 1. 1 over 120 times 1 times 1. So that's my fifth degree polynomial. And of course, I could do additional terms by going to a sixth term, which would give me 1 over 720 and so on. And uh, let's just see what we, uh, what we have here. So here I have P0, the zeroth degree Taylor polynomial. That is equal to 1. Here I have the so when I'm drawing these arrows, I'm saying if I only go this far out, 
If I go out to the first degree Taylor polynomial, I'm going to have 1 plus 1, which is 2. If I go out to the third degree, sorry, the second degree Taylor polynomial, I'm going to have 1 plus 1 plus a half, 2 and a half. If I go out to the third degree Taylor polynomial, I'm going to get p3, which is 2 and a half plus a 6, which is 2 and 2 thirds, 2 and 2 thirds, which is 2.666, let's say, just to compare it using decimals here now, but it's actually just 2 and 2 thirds exactly. And so here, I'm going to have p4, and that's going to be 2, and now uh, I believe this is 0 0.708, uh, I think it's 70833 maybe, and this is p5, which I think is 2.7. 1666 six, six, dot dot dot. And so here's the value of my zero degree Taylor polynomial. That's just uh, one. It's just the value of f at x bar, which is one. Let's actually write that in here. This is f of x bar equals one, e to the zero. Uh, second degree Taylor polynomial, I get approximation of 2, which is not great. Third degree, uh, sorry, the, the first degree polynomial, I get, a, I get 2, which is not great. The second degree Taylor polynomial, I get 2.5, as we already did. That's better. Third degree Taylor polynomial, 2.666. Fourth degree Taylor polynomial, I'm getting very close to the actual exact value of E. Fifth degree Taylor polynomial, much closer. Here, I'm only off by about one one-thousandth, roughly one one-thousandth here uh, from the exact value. So, and one isn't all that close to zero here. So, the Taylor polynomial is giving me a pretty darn good approximation to the value of e, to the value of e to the first power, f of one. And um, if I were to Evaluate this for an x that's closer. Let's say half e. Um, uh, sorry, x is a half, so that I've got e to the one half, which is the square root of e. So you might do this actually as an exercise. You might try doing this for p. We can go p five uh, for x equals a half. So that means we're looking for e to the one half, which is the square root of e. And so, what's the square root of e? It's the square root of this. But what number that is, well, I don't know. But it turns out it's really easy to calculate an approximation by using the Taylor polynomial and going out this far. Again, you need to really go about to here, and you'll get a really, really good approximation for this because it's closer to x bar equals 0. So, I think that's a, a pretty, good, uh, pretty good development of Taylor polynomials uh, used as approximating functions for any function. Oh, one more thing. I should say that this Taylor's theorem that tells us this is all predicated on if the function f is n times differentiable. I really should have added that. That is, uh, this. So, of course, we have to have all these derivatives existing uh, for this to, to actually make any sense here. So, this I think gives us a pretty good development of Taylor polynomials. Um, uh, approximating functions, using Taylor uh, polynomials to approximate things. And notice that I mentioned this is about derivatives, but I only really talked about a derivative and the definition of a derivative uh, when we were talking about the first degree Taylor polynomial and used that as a kind of definition of the derivative of the function f. We're going to come back 
for our, our next lecture, our next part of, I guess, this continuing lecture, and look at derivatives more generally. And then we will come back, and this is an important point that we have to, to now take care of, and that is to uh, develop the idea of a Taylor polynomial, not just for functions from R into R, but for functions from R n into R. So we want to be able to talk about approximating functions on uh, R n, n-dimensional space, not just real functions, not just functions where uh, the domain is, is the real numbers. So that's where we'll go next time. And so that's it for this, uh, that's it for this lecture here. So see you next time.